Navy helicopter pilots, the New York Times, and the world's oldest profession. Find out what all these have in common when we speak to today's guest on the Admiral's Almanac. Welcome again to another episode of the Admiral's Almanac, your leadership life connection, where I bring leaders from all walks of life into yours. I'm your host, Rear Admiral Gary Hall. I recently published a book, a bestseller on Amazon.com called Navigating Leadership, Making a Pact with Excellence. After years of procrastination, I finally got to it and I realized you can't write a book or write anything without help from others. So that brings us to today's guest, George Galderisi. And let's get to it. Today I'm announcing an upcoming series of podcasts with my friend and fellow naval aviator, George Galderisi. In addition to having a successful 30-year career in uniform, he's had a second career as a Navy civilian where he is Director of Strategic Assessment and Technical Futures at the Naval Information Warfare Center in beautiful San Diego. He is a successful writer of fiction and nonfiction, including four New York Times best-selling novels. George has previously shared with me that he received an enormous amount of help and guidance throughout his writing career, and he is most happy to pay it forward by sharing what he has learned with beginning, emerging, and even accomplished writers. George, tell us what you have planned or what you have in mind for these upcoming six podcasts. Yeah, Gary. Well, first of all, thanks uh, thanks again for, for having me on the show. It's uh, it's good to share with uh with uh, both beginning and emerging and, and also accomplished writers. Um, I've had a lot of help along the way. And, and as you said, I'd, I'd like to pay it forward by, by bringing more people on board. I guess I wanted to start by saying um, and, and seeing if you agree with me that um, writing is, is really the oldest profession. Well, wait a minute, the oldest profession. I and mean, this is a, a PG podcast. We're going to keep it that. So you're saying that writing is the oldest profession. Yeah, and I, I've been thinking about that other profession you alluded to. But no, when you think about it, um, you know, when our cave ancestors were hungry, uh, they sent the uh, the burliest uh, person out there, and, and we'll, we'll just call him Ugg for our purposes, and, and he, he went out to find some game. And, and um, you know, let's say he took on and defeated the, uh, the saber-toothed tiger. Um, do you think he just came back to the cave and threw it in the sand and said, enjoy your meal? Uh, no, I, I would imagine that he would want to chronicle his uh, success as being the fearless hunter gatherer gatherer of his tribe. Yeah, he did. But uh, when you think about it, uh, way back when uh, that was before language was invented, so he 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 had to tell that story. We have in our human DNA uh, the need to tell. So um, so he drew these pictures on the cave walls, you know, explaining the uh, the hunt and, and maybe embellishing his uh, his bravery a little bit. Uh, and we know this because uh, there are caves in France dating 400,000 or 40,000 years ago uh, that have these pictures. So uh, so that was really the, the first profession is telling stories to your mates. Yeah, this was definitely before uh, Microsoft Word and chat GPT uh, using art for language. Yeah, exactly. And then, you know, uh, let's let's be honest. Ugg didn't always succeed, and if he went out on the hunt and didn't come back, uh, you know, a day or two later, when his uh, when his mates found his uh, skeletal bones, they went back to the cave and, and drew pictures about how brave uh, uh, Ugg was. So again, the, the 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 point is, people want to communicate. There's this deep psych- psychological um, thing in our DNA that's called the need to tell. So that that was really. You know how how we started telling stories, and it's always uh, fascinating to find uh, these cave paintings. I'll call them cave paintings, and dating and finding out that people were communicating uh, through pictures forty thousand years ago. But now, bring us up from the Stone Age into modern times. Yeah, of course. And so, um, you know, as we evolve these podcasts throughout the rest of the year, I, I guess the most important thing is. Um, 
to convey to your listeners that 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 writing is normal. It's not um, for a select few or for some dilettantes because people have this vision that uh, a writer is someone who moves to Paris. Uh, rents uh, a fourth floor um, unheated rat infested uh, walk up and labors away for two to three years and uh, comes forward with their, uh, you know, with their magnificent uh, best selling opus. Um, you know, there may be people like that. I just don't know any of them. No, no, there's uh, are the old adage, you know, how do you write? You just uh, open a vein and bleed. But so. I think you once said uh, history is what historians and writers say it is. So it's extremely important for leaders of all ages to all levels in all ages uh, to write. Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, and and I, I wish I could claim uh, credit for that quote. I think I've shared it with you, but I first heard it from uh, uh, Norman Pullmore, who's uh, a naval historian who'd written about 40 books. And and you're right, whoever writes it down first, that's the um, uh, that's that's what it is. And another way of saying it is um, journalism is the first draft of history. Right. Uh, and our professional journal in the naval helicopter uh, world is uh, from NHA, wrote a review, and they're always looking for writers. And I think it's important for everyone at every level to put pen to paper to uh, write, especially because, uh, you know, as a gentleman of our age, we lose um, friends and colleagues. And when obituaries are written, uh, family members will say, well, Uncle Gary, he was in the Navy. Oh, wait a minute. He commanded a destroyer at the Bay of Pigs. He did this. So I think it's important for our young leaders to write to write their story, write what they're familiar with, um, because it's important to pass down. It's a legacy. No, you're, you're, you're absolutely right, Gary. And, um, you know, we used to do that back in the day with letters. And there's story after story about how... Um, you know, someone's uh, grandpa died and they went up in the attic and they found all these letters that he wrote to their grandma during World War II. People don't write letters anymore. Um, so the idea, plus a stamp now costs 66 cents, could agree. So um, the Twitter Twitter isn't safe, Facebook isn't safe. So if someone's got to write it down in a way that um, that's sensible, and, and you're exactly right, if you write for no other reason. It's to leave that legacy behind, so your kids and grandkids and great grandkids uh, know who the heck you are. You you were exactly. So I'm Lieutenant First Lieutenant Snuffy with a PE major from the Air Force Academy. How do I start? Do people approach you and ask you how did you start? Yeah, they do, and I, and I guess just to to go upstream of that, just just one little bit, uh, looking ahead to these podcasts, it's this isn't going to be a um, you know with apologies to Tony Robbins, this isn't going to be one of those you can do it pep talks, but just some common sense advice. So to answer your question directly, Gary, when um, when people approach me at at writing seminars I'm conducting or during book talks or even the grocery checkout line, uh, the conversation usually starts this way. Um, I've got a great idea for a book. Can you help me? And, you know, when I express interest, um, unfortunately, I, I can't because when they say I've got a great idea for a book, it's usually the, uh, the great American novel or it's a memoir. And when I ask them if they've ever written anything before, uh, they say no. So, right. So you got to get and you got to start writing somewhere. And that's what you're going to help us with. You can't sit here and I'm going to write the next uh, Ben-Hur a historical novel. And it's not something you're familiar with. So you're going to help us start off and put pen to paper. Is that correct? Yeah, exactly. And you you uh, alluded to it earlier, talking about Rotary View. And again, it's kind of like the guy in, in Paris uh, who does that opus. Um you know, there, there may be people who um, have never written anything uh, ever, even a letter to the editor or something for their college newsletter uh, that can produce a, um, a great novel or a great memoir or a great historical uh, work. Uh, but again, I just don't know any of them. Most, in fact, all writers I know started out with something in their alumni magazine, something in a trade journal, uh, something in a um, 
a professional magazine like Rotary Review or Naval Institute Proceedings or Naval War College Review. And, and, and the reason that works is, um, First of all, it's not a momentous thing. You can write an article in, in less than a week and you get some feedback from editors and you hone your writing skills. It's like getting a, a, a master's in, um, in, uh, in, in fine arts. And then by the time you're ready to take on, um, a bigger work, you've, you know, you've honed your skills. It's like, uh, like in our world and, um, uh, in naval aviation, you, um, you don't start flying the aircraft you're, flying in a squadron until you go through the training command and, and, and hone your skills. Right. When I, I think about that analogy of flying is, you know, the first aircraft we got into with just simple gauges and then each aircraft that they trained us in added more gauges until we get to the um, Seahawk Romeo version with all sorts of technology. So we start small. So that's kind of your advice, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. And, and I think, um, you know, what we're planning for these podcasts is, um, is to share with your readers uh, information that's not just entertaining, but, but useful. And we'll cover the landscape and talk about various aspects of writing. I mean, uh, as I uh, mentioned earlier, it includes everything from why it's in our human DNA to write and, um, how to launch your writing efforts by, by starting small for journals and magazines. Um, and again, trade online and other media and how to tackle nonfiction, uh, how to write successful novels and how to establish an online presence and, and how to leverage social media to, um, to help your efforts. So it's a pretty wide spectrum, but, um, I think if we break it into bite sized chunks like that, um, it'll be least, most useful to your readers. And listen up. Wow, that's a lot to digest. How can we share that with my podcast uh, listeners? Yeah, Gary. Well, again, uh, I think the most useful way for your listeners, if we do the podcast maybe approximately once a month, and uh, in between those, um, I'll have my email address available for your uh, listeners and my website, and, and people are certainly uh, welcome to reach out to me directly. And uh, any help I can provide, I'd, I'd be delighted to do that. Uh, super. Any final words as we wrap up this teaser for writing with George Galderisi, New York Times bestselling author, how to put pen to paper and write? Yeah, no, thanks, Gary. I, I guess the one thought I wanted to uh, to leave with you is uh, the, I've had a mentor throughout my writing career, uh, Dick Couch, a former uh, fellow former naval officer. And, um, you know, what, what he said once is uh, some men want to die with their boots on. Uh, but when I cash in my chips, I want to be slumped over the keyboard <laughs> and they can plant me with my word processor because I may wake up and want to write about it. So what, what Dick's conveying is it's just damn fun to write and, um, you know, getting started in a way that's not a big rock up a steep hill is probably best. And, and I think that's where we're trying to go with this. So so thanks again for uh, having me on the show and, uh, and and sharing some of these views. All right, Fred. That's great, George. I, I appreciate that. And writing is fun. And once you start writing, uh, the writing itself takes over and guides you. So you'll learn a lot about yourself and a lot about others and how you think and how you uh, communicate. So for all my listeners, again, subscribe to the Admiral's Almanac wherever you get your podcasts. This will be a six episode masterclass in how to write and get in print. Now is the time to start, so subscribe to the Admiral's Almanac wherever you get your podcasts. Also, go to www.admiralsalmanac.com. This is my pod page. On that home page, you'll find a little microphone icon. Click on that icon, and you'll be able to send George and I a voicemail with your questions. So again, until we meet again, here's wishing you a happy voyage home. Thank you.